A quarter of a million people died in the Indian Ocean tsunami of December 2004. A great number of these lives could have been saved if only they received an early warning. The news of the oncoming disaster reached the centers of power soon enough, but the systems were simply not in place to get the word across to people directly at risk. When disasters strike, early warnings can save thousands of lives. This is true not just for tsunamis, but also for cyclones and floods, all of which science can now detect or anticipate. But knowing about an impending disaster is one thing. Warning everyone at risk quickly and effectively is quite another. Going that last mile is a big challenge. After the tsunami, researchers, telecom operators and civil society came together in Sri Lanka to try out different ways to cover that last mile. I think the critically important thing we have to understand is that with rapid onset hazards, uh, it's extremely important that A, the, 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 the community, the village, the people who are affected, they are prepared to, to respond and that they respond appropriately. This was an action research project by Learn Asia to find out how communities can use technology and training to safeguard against disasters. It was implemented by Sarvodaya, Sri Lanka's largest development organization, together with several other partners. Actually, we played multiple roles in the project. At the community level, we were involved in selecting uh, a suitable set of villages for this research project. And the project was carried out in villages uh, which have been involved with Sarvodaya work for a long time. And then we implemented the project and we served as the in interface to the community. 30 youth leaders from Sarvodaya's Peace Brigade received training in community-based disaster preparedness. They took this knowledge and training to 32 chosen villages. These communities then decided on the most effective ways for locally communicating a disaster warning they would receive. But where would that warning come from? At its headquarters in suburban Colombo, Sarvodia set up a hazard information hub. Here they maintain close links with the government's disaster warning agencies and international sources. When the government issues a warning, the hub relays and amplifies it to the Sarvodaya network. This is not in any way, shape or form a public warning system that lots of people talk about. So when you talk about a community-based warning system, you're not talking about reaching every member of the community. You're talking about a representative of the community designated first responders. The project tested five different communication technologies to reach these first responders reliably and effectively. Some of these, such as VSAT terminals and wireless fixed phones, are widely used. Others were designed or customized for this project. Java-enabled mobile phones were customized to carry text alerts in English, Sinhala and Tamil. Sri Lanka's leading operator, Dialog Telecom, designed a remote alarm device. This project was first to try out the addressable satellite radio designed by World Space Corporation, 
a satellite operator. If you don't have the technology, if you don't have the assurance and the trust that is built up over time that the messages will be reliable, they will come rain or shine, they will come in the middle of the night when I'm sleeping, they will come in the middle of the day when my husband is not here, all those things. I mean, it's basically a trust relationship that has to be anchored by the technology. It's like running a relay from the hub to the first responders and from them to the communities at risk. Speed and accuracy are of essence. To guarantee information delivery, at least two communication technologies must be used. And everybody should know and remember what to do when a critical moment arrives. This was achieved through awareness raising and simulations.